All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Kruger Show with a little 49er video, the 10 free agents that I'd, I'd be interested in if I were the 49ers this offseason. We'll hit on that coming up next. Uh, but first, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or in and tour until they run out. Uh, get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Go say hi to Damon and Mary, the owners. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. I love Underdog Fantasy. Check the link in the description. Use that promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they'll match you up to your first $100 this week in Underdog. I'm going with Jaden Reed, higher than 48.5 receiving yards. Kareem Hunt, higher than 24.5 rushing yards. Amon Ross St. Brown, higher than 7.5 receptions against the Rams. Josh Allen, higher than 220.5 passing yards. And Isaiah Pacheco in the freezing cold at Arrowhead, higher than 64 and a half rushing yards. Good luck to everybody on that. All right. The 49ers, um, you know, the free agency deal with the Niners is that I really think that they've they're doing free agency better than the other teams right now. And you say, well, how do what do you mean by that? How exactly are they doing it better better than other teams? Well, the Niners understand that the equation is let most of your guys walk. Um, and then, you know, you let, if you let seven guys walk and you sign two free agents, then you have a positive compensatory uh, draft pick result and you get draft picks as compensation for losing free agents. And then you can pour those draft picks into younger players and always have kind of a young, deeper roster. So, and the one thing that John Lynch, I think gets as the general manager is that in free agency, you don't want to sign a bunch of guys. You don't. Because you don't want to reward that many new guys um, with big money deals. And in free agency, to get anybody signed, you have to outbid the other teams. So almost by definition, you have to overpay uh, to get free agents. And you don't want to overpay guys from the outside world, bring them into your locker room, and have them be comparable to guys in that room who you're not paying or have not been paid yet because it creates a disharmony and it creates a jealousy factor. And it makes the existing players feel like, you know what? They value guys outside this room more than they value the guys that they have on their own team. So Lynch knows this as a former player and the Niners have pivoted in recent years and they've made a distinctly different um, game plan. And when it comes to free agency, they look at free agency, like, you know what? Let the rank and file free agent walk away. If they want to leave, great. No problem. Let them go. And only go out and sign very few free agents, but go and try to pick off the best guys and pay them the most. Why? Because if you pay a Mooney Ward, nobody's going to have resentment. He's the best defensive back, back in your room. Nobody's going to resent him for the money he makes. Why? Because he's the best player in the room. Um, they gave huge money to Javon Hargrave. Guess what? Nobody's going to resent Javon Hargrave. Why? Because he's probably the best defensive tackle you have in the room. So you pay one guy, maybe two, big money, and let everybody else walk, and then take the compensatory picks, have those extra draft choices, and keep drafting and develop your young players. Be really good on day three of the draft. Be really good on the undrafted free agents. Make astute pickups on day three and after the draft. And compensate. So net, then the net result of this, you have a better chemistry in your locker room because you don't have a bunch of new guys coming in. You have a bunch of guys who you then drafted and developed so they know your culture. Uh, and they're they're not what they're not coming in. And every time you say do this, they're like, well, you know what? In Green Bay, we did it that way. You know, in, in Tampa, we did it that way. In Minnesota, we did. We don't care about that. Here, this is the way we do that. So you have a better locker room, less jealousy. You get a better compensatory situation because you're letting you're only signing one or two free agents, but you're letting seven or eight leave. And so you're getting two or three draft choices every year, and you're adding great players. And the net result is, is you have a younger roster, a deeper roster, a happier locker room, and more star players. This is genius. And this has been the 
the, the, the free agency game plan of Adam Peters and, and John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan the last few years, and it's working really, really well. So that being said, I'm going to give you 10 difference makers. Today, Bleacher Report put out the list of free agents who are out there. And I looked at the list and I went through the list and I looked at what the Niner roster and where they're at and what they could, what they typically would spend money on, what they wouldn't. Um, and I'm going to give you 10 impact free agents that I could see them going after this offseason. All right, here they are in no particular order. Um, where do the Niners always look to spend money? The defensive line. That defensive line. They never can have enough. There's a chance that Eric Armstead is at the end. He's had multiple years in a row of plantar fasciitis. Um, there's no saying that he's going to have that he's going to keep going after this year. I mean, he he definitely has the talent to play another year year or two or three. Um, he's definitely got the ability, but man, that foot pain it caused um, Patrick Willis to give it up early. And if you told me that Armstead, um, the Niners won the Super Bowl this year and Armstead, you know, drove off into the sunset and called it a career, wouldn't be shocked by that. Now, I don't expect it to happen, but it could happen. And if it does happen, it leaves a significant void inside on your defensive line. You have Javon Hargrave, but Kinlaw's a free agent. He'll probably walk away. Um, and, and if Armstead opted to retire, you would have a big hole on your defensive line. So let me give you, we'll start on the defensive line. Who is the, who is the one defensive lineman that you absolutely would love to have and pay Chris Jones, Chris Jones. He can play outside. He can play inside. He can play in a three man front. He can play in a four man front. Uh, he can play in an under front or an over front. He's versatile. He's talented. He's nasty. He's on the chiefs. You could hurt the chiefs and help yourself. Chris Jones would be a guy that I absolutely would pay big money to. Another guy up front who's got that same positional versatility, and he's a really good football player, Christian Wilkins of the Miami Dolphins. You know, Wilkins can play it. Right now he's playing in a 3-4 scheme, but he can play in a 4-3 scheme. Um, he's quick enough to play defensive end. He can play in a 4-3 in a at defensive tackle. He can play in a one-gap penetrating get-up-the-field scheme. If you want to use him with stunts and loops and twists and all kinds of games up front. Christian Wilkins is ideally suited to play those games. Um, Chris Jones would be one. Christian Wilkins would be two. Number three on my list, Justin Matabuke. If the Niners don't win the Super Bowl this year, it's probably because the Ravens beat them in the Super Bowl. And Justin Matabuke is a tremendous player. I think we saw that on Christmas. Uh, Matabuke has had, a, had an incredible year. He's a difference maker. I mean, there's a lot of good football players out there, but this guy's motor is unbelievable. Um, I'm an A&M fan. I watched him in college. Justin Matabuke's always got the motor running. He's scheme versatile, and he's very talented. Another guy who can play inside or outside, um, and another guy who, if you want to play games up front and stunt and twist and 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 have this line them up at end and have them stunt inside, line them up at tackle, have them stunt outside. Matabuke can do that. He can absolutely move, and you would be hurting the Ravens dramatically if you could take him away. So those are the three defensive linemen up front at the tackle spot, and the Niners are always prioritizing a tackle. Now, if Armstead comes back, none of these guys are really a fit. But if Armstead rides off into the sunset, I would go after those three guys with everything I got. All right, let's go into the secondary. Antoine Winfield. Antoine Winfield is incredible. Great football player. Um, I don't know what the Niners are going to do at safety. They've got Afonga. They've got Jair Brown. They've got Ty, uh, Tayshawn Gibson, who's old, an older player. But, man, Antoine Winfield is a difference maker, and I would be very interested in Antoine Winfield. Another safety that I'd be very interested in, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Now, I know he's had words with Debo, but C.J. Gardner-Johnson is just nasty. This guy can play the nickel corner. He can play corner. He can play safety. This is a hitter. He's an intimidator. He's a ball hawk. I want C.J. Gardner-Johnson on my team. I'd rather have him on my team than play against him. He's a great football player. Uh, he's a difference-making football player. Another guy, Kyle Duggar, 
New England Patriots. If Belichick retires and drives off into the sunset, and you know, obviously, or even if he doesn't retire, he's leaving New England. And Kyle Duggar is a phenomenal young safety. Um, I'd be very interested in him. One guy that makes a ton of sense for the 49ers, Kenny Moore the second, the Indianapolis Colts slot corner. He's one of the best slot corners in the game. Slot corner has become maybe one of the most important positions on the field defensively. Your slot corner is more important than who's your third linebacker. So Kenny Moore, the second is one of the NFL's best slot corners. And I would have a ton of interest in Kenny Moore. The second, if he, if, you know, if they get to free agency and they're looking for a difference maker. Now let's go for the defensive ends, Josh Allen. You know, I, after watching, um, you know, Nick Bosa opposite Chase Young, you know, uh, Chase Young is nice, but Chase Young is stiff compared to what he was coming into the league. Um, and he's probably going to demand a high dollar figure. I'd rather let Chase Young walk and go after Josh Allen. And if it's not Josh Allen, I'd rather let Chase Young walk and go after Brian Burns. Uh, and if it's not Brian Burns, I'd go after Josh Ushi out of New England, who's an undersized uh, edge rusher. But those three edge guys are true difference makers and true speedsters. If you added a Josh Allen, a Brian Burns, or a Josh Ushi opposite Nick Bosa, I think you would help your football team significantly. And if I'm going to throw in one offensive lineman, uh, Mike uh, Owenu from the Patriots. You know, the Niners are probably going to go into the draft for a right tackle. That'll be my guess. And there's not a lot of right tackles out there in free agency, but Owenu uh, for the Patriots is a good one. And he might be the best right tackle that's available uh, in this free agent period. So those are all significant names. And the Niners have their own, you know, problems on the free agent market. I mean, are they going to, you know, Brandon Ayuk's not a free agent, but are you going to give him an extension? Probably. They're probably going to let Chase Young walk. They may let Randy Gregory walk. If they decide they're going to let those guys walk um, and you want to upgrade that defensive end spot, Josh Allen, Brian Burns, Josh Ushi would be the three guys that I would be looking at most. All right, there you go. 49ers don't really do much in free agency these days, that's for sure. But what they do, they look for one great player. And those 10 or 11 great players I gave you right there, I think will be on their short list. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Thanks to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all you guys for, for, for supporting consistently the Krug Show on YouTube.